On Monday, the five permanent members of the UN Security Council met to discuss the situation in Afghanistan ahead of the United States pulling out the last remaining troops on the following day. Discussion focused primarily on responding to the August 26th bombing of Kabul's Hamid Karzai airport, claimed by the Islamic State of Iraq in the Levant Khorasan province, also known as ISIL-K. In addition to gauging international approval for increased U.S. air and drone strikes targeting ISIL-K members throughout Afghanistan, the Permanent Five adopted a resolution holding the Taliban to their promise of allowing Afghan civilians and foreign nationals safe passage out of the country. This effort will likely be hampered by U.S. President Joe Biden's recent decision to pull non-military diplomatic personnel from the country along with the troops. Officials have stated that the embassy in Kabul will be out of operation until relations with the Taliban can be assessed despite the Taliban's expressed interest in maintaining some form of diplomatic relations with the U.S. The Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, on behalf of its people, wants to have good diplomatic relations with the world, including the United States, and we want to make our relations with the United States better in the future through diplomatic means. While the Taliban remains engaged in talks with the U.S. regarding future diplomatic presence, it is unclear if the Biden administration will legally recognize the new regime. However, the meeting of the Permanent Five may herald a tentative, though limited, recognition of the Taliban as the official governing force in Afghanistan. The UNSC released a statement on August 27th condemning the bombings, but removed a reference to the Taliban's possible support of terrorism. This edit may signal an increased recognition of the Taliban's rule and an effort to avoid increasing hostilities with Afghanistan's de facto leadership. Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador, also known as AMLO, gave his third State of the Union address on Wednesday. Crucial to AMLO's agenda is rooting out corruption, which has long plagued the nation's security and infrastructure, resulting in a mishandled COVID-19 pandemic response. However, AMLO's efforts have become stagnant, with few allegations ever being brought to trial since his historic landslide victory in 2018. AMLO's inability to fulfill his promises come at an inopportune time. Upon his inauguration, he promised to allow the public a chance to vote him out of office halfway through his six-year term through a recall referendum. As AMLO looks ahead to the March 2022 plebiscite, he continues to underscore the administration's accomplishments to combat diminishing approval ratings. In the June election, the lack of public confidence resulted in the president's Morena party losing its two-thirds supermajority while still retaining a majority. Last week, U.S. Special Climate Envoy John Kerry underwent a three-day visit to China. Kerry met with his Chinese counterpart Xia Jinhua to discuss cooperation on carbon emissions reductions. Despite rising tensions between Washington and Beijing, China and the U.S. have agreed to cooperate against climate change regardless of competition in other spheres. Both sides are establishing what exactly coordination entails ahead of the U.N. Glasgow Climate Change Conference in early November. Agreements will likely involve policies promoting a circular economy and investments in green energy storage to decarbonize. Expect Kerry to push strongly for China to speed up its timeline for net zero emissions from 2060 to 2050 to be more in line with US and EU projections. However, this will likely prove difficult as the Chinese economy relies heavily on coal. As a short-term remedy, expect China to lean on pushing electric vehicle sales for both economic and environmental reasons. Electric vehicle usage cuts back on extreme air pollution in major cities while also positioning China to become a global center for vehicle and battery production. Beijing's success in this initiative will mean decreased cost of electric vehicles for consumers and increased profits and national energy security for Beijing.